I'm going to talk to you about uh, pro-social machines. But before I start, let me tell you a little bit about me. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, I love science fiction. I wanted to go to the moon, to Mars, to really explore the space. Of course, I couldn't. And in the end, I ended up in technical, doing electrotechnical engineering. I have to say I didn't like the degree very much, but in the end, I found something that really inspired me. I found AI, artificial intelligence. And this idea that we can create machines that are intelligent, that get inspiration by what we are as humans, our intelligence, and put that into machine was something out of science fiction. So I started working in uh, AI, and over the years, AI has gone up and down. And recently, there's been a lot of discussion about what AI can do, what has achieved, and the dangers of artificial intelligence. Yet, I'm very positive and an optimist. And in fact, I think AI can have a big role in creating a better society by creating what I call pro-social machines. So, what is pro-social machines? We live in this connected world where our actions influence the environment, the people we work, our friends, our families, and our colleagues, and in general, the society. And it's this influence that we have between us, this kind of relationship that exists, that kind of makes us humans. However, every day when we watch the news, when we read, in fact, when we walk in the streets, we are, uh, we see there's uh, signs of lack of empathy, of uh, uh, not compassion environment, so not caring. In fact, Obama even talked about the, uh, the lack of empathy in the world. In fact, humans face these dilemmas uh, that are unpre unprecedented scale antibiotic resistance, climate change, and increasing inequality. So, how do we solve these problems? Well, we have to address it from a population-specific analysis. We have to look at the society, at the dynamics of the society, in order to really see how to improve it. But what is a society? You know? With social media, society is not only us, it's all the connections that we have and the influence that we have from each other through all kinds of technological means. In fact, our society is changing as machines like robots and AI are at our doorsteps, influencing, interacting with us, being our partners, our friends, our drivers with autonomous cars, and even our companions. So let me show you a little bit about what these machines, these robots, are doing together with humans. And this is research from my lab that I want to show you a little bit. It's the video. This cat plays chess and is a friend of one of them. He understands them and is like a companion. This one helps people assemble things. In fact, we've been testing it with a uh, uh, blind. And it has emotions. This 
this one has emotions. And he plays cards, he plays Sweka. And people really like to play with him. This was a robotic suitcase that we tested how people trust it, how people interact with it. This one we have it in the hospital to interact with children with autism. This one is a tutor. It perceives the situation, it helps, it manages the learning, and it's like a friend. Thank you. Thank you. So, in reality, what we have now is a society where both us humans and machines are part. And these machines become very intelligent. So we have humans and, mach and machines. So pro-social machines wa are what? They are machines that support and promote actions that benefit the society. And our challenge of AI is how do you nurture or nudge these pro-social machines to make a better society and to make humans help each other and be together. So we need to design these robots, these agents, these bots that immerse, immersed in our world is, are going to promote collective action, are going to be pro-social in situations where naturally collaboration and pro-sociality wouldn't naturally ar arise. So let me give you an example of the bystander effect. Does anyone know about the bystander effect? Okay, I'll tell you. So imagine you have a situation that you see uh, an aggression, someone on the street being hit by a car, and you're there alone. The likelihood is that you would act, that you do something about it. But if there's two, or three, or many people, the likelihood that you would act would decrease. Okay, and why? There's several processes that exist in this bystander effect. The first one is called the audience inhibition. So you're there, nobody's acting, so you don't do anything about it. I mean, and it can be uh, some, something on TV, you shouldn't act, the other ones are not doing it. The second one is social influence. You, you know, okay, they're not doing anything, so it's not my role to do. And finally is the diffusion, diffusion of responsibility, which is, uh, well, I'm not to blame. There's so many people here. So why should I be responsible? Okay. So these three processes are there and make us not act, not report cases. We see cyberbullying, we don't act. We see things that really uh, makes it angry and won't act. So how can we change this? Okay? That's the idea. We're going to put machines, we're going to use AI to change. Well, in this society, what does it happen if we have now machines that are intelligent, that are autonomous? Sometimes they even look like us. Well, you have a camera and you think, well, well, and another robot, and a drone, the drone is going around, or another robot. So, what do you do? Well, you may think, 
well, there's cameras, there's the robots, I shouldn't act, they're there, okay? Or I can say, it's not my problem. It should be, I, the cameras are from the government, it's someone else's problem, I'm not going to act. So machines may be even making it worse, but if we make them intelligent and prosocial, then we can act then we can make it better. So what these machines can do? Well, they can intervene, they can act themselves, they can make people act. So they intervene, and at some point, in the way they intervene, people start acting. And that's the goal of prosocial machines. So how are we going to engineer? There's an equilibrium and it's to do with this equilibrium idea. So there's an equilibrium that we need to find. And there's an equilibrium there in the society that makes people not acting. And we need to challenge that equilibrium. We need to kind of force something to change, to unbalance this established uh, um, way of acting or not acting. So, how to do that? Well, first of all, we need to look at transparency. Our machines, especially AI machines, need to be transparent, need to justify their actions, need to make it clear what they're doing and why, so that people can understand why they should act as well. The second one, we can enforce in these machines some pro-social norms, some norms that make them really good agents and good robots. And that, given social influence, may lead people to, to also act in a certain way. In fact, there's a world of uh, AI and people doing ethics in AI exactly in this idea where we embed some ethical norms and some ethical constraints in the way we program our machines. So that's extremely important. The second one, the third one is we need to kind of put some pathological behaviors there. So a machine that always helps may be a good thing in a population because it propagates this kind of feeling of help. So by creating pathological behaviors, pro-social ones, we may imbalance this equilibrium that exists in the society. And finally, and we've been working a lot on this, we can create in these machines some empathic characteristics and increase the social influence. So, well, we've had several projects. Some of the projects address uh, issues for our audience. Uh, we had a project called Fear Not to address, uh, to help uh, kids, victims of bullying, or to train people how to be social, uh, cultural sensitive, to look at cultural sensitivity. But we can also simulate the societies using evolutionary game theory and, and create agents there that are like artificial agents that will allows us to study what happens at the society level. And we can build robots that are empathic and are going to really help and interact with people in that way. In fact, uh, this is a, a simple project that my students in the course of social robotics uh, did this last semester, where they studied the impact of a rubbish bin in the prosocial behavior of picking up rubbish. And we had two conditions, one where the robotic rubbish bin didn't act, didn't do anything, and the other one where it did act and nudged people to pick up rubbish. And there's a really big difference in the way that people act. In the first one, not even 10% of the people picked up the rubbish. In the second one, the second condition, they actually started picking up rubbish. And this is so simple that we can do and yet can make such a big difference. So how can we engineer sociality and caring in a society? I think AI, artificial intelligence, has a role there by creating these pro-social machines. 
that's my goal. And I hope that it will be your goal as well after this. Thank you.